Concentration, memory, pairs, whatever you want to call it, it's a classic card game that's been around forever. And I think it's pretty rubbish for the English classroom. But with a few simple changes you can give it a new lease of life and practice more than just vocabulary. I'm Will from Enchanted ESL and in this video I'm going to show you my modifications to the game of pairs, or whatever you call it, and how you can adjust it to meet the needs of your students. Just in case you haven't played before, pairs, memory, concentration, requires a deck of cards with two copies of each. I'm going to use these animal cards that I made for another game, Go Fish. But you can use whatever flash cards you like as long as only one side has the picture and the word on. The other side must be blank. In the normal game, you mix up all of the cards face down, and you can arrange them into a grid if you want, but it's not necessary. Then players take it in turns to flip over two cards. If they're a matching pair, then the player takes those two cards out and they get a point. If they're different, they flip them back over and it's another player's turn. When all the pairs are found, the player with the most points wins. Very simple and not much English involved. Yes, your students can say the words of the things they flip over, but that's about it. In this upgraded version of the game, players can earn more attempts at flipping over the cards by using the words in those cards in a particular language structure. For example, we can practice comparatives. A player flips over a rhino and a hedgehog. Normally this just means it's the end of their turn because they didn't find a matching pair. But they can have another go if they can make a comparative sentence using a rhino and hedgehog. For example, rhinos are bigger than hedgehogs or hedgehogs are more common than rhinos. Once they've said that, they flip the rhino and the hedgehog back face down, but then they have another turn. And again, if they don't find a match, then they can say another comparative sentence to earn another turn. But this doesn't go on forever. A player can only flip over three cards in one turn before it passes to the next player. And if they find a matching pair, then it immediately ends their turn. With this rule, students not only practice the vocabulary, but they're using it in a context and practicing some grammar too. And of course, it doesn't have to be comparatives. It could be expressing opinions or preferences, like, I prefer hedgehogs because they're cute. Or a mini story, the rhino accidentally stepped on the hedgehog and got spikes in its foot. Adapt it to what your students need and what cards you have available. This all makes the game usable with intermediates as well as beginners. With advanced students, you're probably not gonna find anything stimulating enough for them, but if you do, let me know in the comments. Another classic game that I see used a lot in ESL is Hangman and it's also rubbish. But like in this video, I've transformed it into a much better alternative for English teaching. You can find out how I did that right here. But for now, I've been Will from Enchanted ESL wishing you all the joy and success in your teaching. See ya!